How's everybody? Good? 2020, wow. Did you like fly your car here? I don't, when I was young, I was thinking 2020, if we would ever live to 2020, it would be, I don't know, I guess it would look sort of like Dubai, but with flying cars and all of that. How are you doing on your New Year's resolutions? Yeah, me too. It's sort of that slump, we hit it real hard, and now we're in that area going, mm, well, maybe not. Maybe I set my goals a little bit too high. <laughs> hey, we put a huge emphasis on people feeling welcome, because you know what? We think God wants people to feel welcome. And I don't know about you, but do you, rem do you remember the first time you went to church? Remember what that was like? I do. I walked into this place, this gathering, uh, you know, I was a bit nervous, and I looked around, and I thought, man, everybody's dressed nice here. I'm looking around right now, and I'm going, everybody's dressed nice here, <laughs> better than me, and this feeling that, I know it has to be in my mind, but everybody had a, a big, big smile on their face, a big cheesy smile, and I don't know, I just, I felt do I belong? Do I belong to this place? I mean, I'm so different. It's like everybody has their act together. Do you know what I'm saying? And I didn't. Everybody's perfect, but I'm not. And if they knew who I really was, then I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be there. Have you ever felt like that? Well, I did. In fact... I have since then too as well. <laughs> but even on the day that I was ordained, that's the process of becoming a minister, at my home church, my home church, I had a lady, as soon as the elders prayed for me, a lady rushed the stage and she looked down at me in her glasses and she said, Timmy, I'm gonna be watching you. And, uh, you know, because I wasn't, you know, I was a bit of a troubled student, I guess, growing up. That lady ended up becoming a very, very good friend and supporter of my ministry and my family and stuff. I say all that to say this, is that fellowship wants you to know that this is a place that it's okay to be not okay. Really, I know we say that and we are going to continue to say it because literally we need to remind ourselves of that. That is a big value that we don't take ourselves so seriously, that this is a place of not perfect people, but a place of imperfect people worshiping a perfect God, right? Yeah, amen. And so I don't know where you're at, you know, but, uh, or how you've come in here today, but you are in a safe place. And I don't know where I would have been if people wouldn't have overlooked some of my issues, looked past that, and God used them to express his love through them. And so fellowships is a place to be okay, to not be okay, all right? And today we are going to launch something that's been in, uh, in the plans for a long time. Actually, it's been in the heart of fellowship for a long time, a compassion ministry. It is the DNA of our, of, our, of our church. But today will be the official launch of Compass Ministry. What is Compass Ministry? Compass Ministry is a compassionate care ministry at fellowship that aims to support all of us, basically individuals and families who are going through difficulties and need of help. And I say all of us because we all go through difficulties and issues. And in a few minutes, we're gonna hear more about how you can get involved in this ministry. Um, but why are we launching Compass? We're launching because every single one of us have what we can call hurts, hangups, habits, Hurts are those feelings caused by someone's behavior. It could be a situation. Habits are addictions in our life. Hangups are, are like mental attitudes that hurt us. Could be anger issues, could be fear, could even be depression. It doesn't matter what hurt or hangup you have or habit here today. 
that there's hope in Jesus and there's help here. So maybe you're hurt, you're hurt because someone's behavior towards you um, that you had no control of and you're holding on to that. You're in a safe place. Maybe you have a habit, an addiction, uh, actions that you're doing that is, that is hurting you and hurting other people and you realize, you know deep down inside you need help. Maybe that's you. Maybe you have hangups. Maybe you have something going on with your, your mind, mental attitudes that hurt yourself or, or, or other people. You know, a lot of times we don't think of it like this. In fact, I just, I've been talking to people already this morning that know people that need help, okay? And it's easy to do that, isn't it? It's like, uh-huh, this, uh, this message is for mm-hmm, <laughs> right? But in fact, we are all recovering from the fall. Ever since the beginning, God created the world perfect. It was perfect. Perfect communion with God and man, right? And man disobeyed God, and all hell broke loose. Really. The curse came down, and we live in a broken, broken world. And a lot of times, we hold on to these hurts, we hold on to these habits, we hold on to these hang-ups, because they're ours. We own them. I want control of my life. But this is something we don't think about. How does it affect other people? How does... Even sin, how does my own sin affect others around me? Affect my spouse, affect my parents, my children, my coworkers. Let's pray. And then I'm gonna share a scripture that I believe is the heartbeat of Compass Ministry. Would you bow your head with me? Lord, God, I just, here it is again, Friday, and we get to be here in Dubai, two seasons, worshiping you, hearing from your word. And Lord, whether we know or not, we need you. And I can't think of a better prayer that we could pray, Lord. And as I look out at this, as my friends here in the crowd, I know Everyone in this place, including myself, we need you, Lord. So would you just show up today and grab our hearts and pull us closer to you, Lord, and instill hope because there is hope in you and there's help in your body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you have your your if you have the Bible with you or a or your fellowship app or a Bible, go ahead and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. You can follow along also on the screen. We'll start with uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3. It says this. Blessed be the God, that means praiseworthy, praise, praise to God, praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of some comfort. No, you're listening, aren't you? What's it say? All comfort. I just love that word, all that speaks to me. That, that speaks to me this morning, and I know it should speak to you because if there's anything that you're looking for life or comfort, all comfort is found in God. Let's go on. Who comforts us in our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. There's a lot of neat things going on in, in, in 2 Corinthians. Um, Paul, essentially, essentially Paul, besides offering a defense of his leadership, his apostleship, in 2 Corinthians he's also challenging us as followers of Jesus, believers in Jesus, to see life through the cross and through the resurrection. 
to look at our afflictions, to look at our hurts, our habits, our hangups through the lens of the cross and through the lens of the resurrection that we all actually have rose-colored glasses. We that put our faith in Jesus have been changed. Yes, it's normal to be abnormal. We're all abnormal. But there is a new normal in Jesus. So we can look at anything that we're going through and God doesn't waste it. He doesn't waste you're hurt. He doesn't even waste the habits and the addictions that you are in and going through right now or your hangups because he is wanting to use that to minister to other people from him, through him, back to him for his glory. Paul identifies here God as the God and Father of our Jesus. He's drawing attention to the fact that the Father is the source of mercy and all comfort as we go through this life until we go into eternity where it's remade. Paradise is remade at that point and things will all be good. But we can be assured right now that any affliction that we're going to, and our afflictions are probably different than the afflictions that Paul is describing in this text. But all afflictions are a result from the fall. So it's pretty, I don't know, I got a simple mind, but good stuff comes from God. Bad stuff comes from the devil and comes from our disobedience, comes from the fall of man. So we live in a broken world where we have to go through stuff, messes. But I pray in Jesus' name that this year, 2020, God will turn our messes into messages. We notice in verse three that Jesus Christ says, God is the Father. We can't help but remember the good news. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that Father, Son, Jesus came, the Father sent Jesus to take on all of that, that disobedience that separated us from God, to take, where the worst of man met the best of God, to take on the shame of our disobedience, to take on our fears, the things that we fear in life, and the guilt that we carry around. God, you know what? God doesn't want us to carry around shame and guilt and fear. And yet it's really hard, right? I know I struggle with it. This thing, the gospel, this thing, this relationship with Jesus is not just an instant, all the time, one time thing. It's we're, 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 we're being shaped. We're all under construction. So how can we be shaped unless we go through some things? But when we go through some things, we're becoming more and more like him as we turn to him. So the greatest act of mercy, the greatest act of comfort was the God who loved us so much that he sent his son. And even if you are the only one in this room right now, that message is for you. As some of you are here and you're battling with guilt, oh, everybody's perfect except for that guy on stage. <laughs> but none of us are. And we all need this God. And we don't graduate from that. That's why his message never gets boring. Some songs we sing, like Amazing Grace, I can sing that forever. I've sung a million times. Okay, that's a lie. I'm sorry, Lord. Maybe a thousand. <laughs> but it never gets old. Why? Because it's the essence of the good news. We love movies that speak of the gospel. We are attracted to this message that is unlike any other message in any other religion. We sang Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. 
Paul put it like this in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He said, he, God, the Father, who did not spare his own son, Jesus, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? If there's something in your heart today that you're wanting, it's a, if it's made of God, it says right here he gives us all things because all things are found in him. God's mercy and God's comfort is found in Jesus. And there was a day that I didn't believe it. I didn't know it. I'm like, I looked at people like you like, this is a fairy tale. All right, if it works for you, it works, whatever. But I didn't get it. And it does take an act of God to come in and open your heart to it. But I remember, I remember what it was like to not have hope, to be addicted. And I won't go into my past, it's ugly, it's, it's, but I had things that held on to my life that kept me from seeing the beauty of God and the beauty of people, even to the point of wanting to kill myself. There's one thing, the reason why I didn't. Man, we're not supposed to cry, are we? (laughs) But I do think about my mama and my mom's love. That's what kept me from ending my own life. But Jesus came into my life, and I'll tell you exactly how it happened. I was watching a broadcast just like right now. This is, this is online. I was watching something online one night, drunk with a t- fifth of Tavarsky vodka, and a guy spoke about the love of God. And I'd heard it before, but when I heard it this time, I don't know. It's that, like, there's a thing, it's like, I think it's under the gallbladder, the knower. <laughs> <laughs> It just opened up, and I'm just like, I believe. I believe. I believe God loves me. And if I, and if, if God loves me and cares about me, I knew I could love myself. And then I thought, you know what? If, if, if God loves me and cares about me, then I know he, believe, he, he loves and cares about everyone. And that from 20 years ago plus has motivated me to share about this beautiful message about Jesus. So, I mean, I've grown. I've I've studied the word and I've learned and, you know, and, and, you know, I, I love ministry. I love talking to people. But, you know, you can even get burned out on good things. And there was a time... Even in, you know, that I came to a place where I struggled again. And this is the first time I've ever shared this. I struggled with anxiety disorder. I struggled with depression. Well, how can I struggle with depression? I know God. I pray. I read the Bible. How can I struggle with this cloud over my head and I couldn't get rid of it? But I was reminded of greater men of God than me. People like Charles Spurgeon, Charles Stanley, Louis Giglio. You know, the people you're listening to are no different than you. We're all in this race, pressing on towards the mark of the high calling of God, battling our own demons, and focusing on the one that beat them all up and looking for the day that we don't, we don't have this flesh to wrestle with anymore. So we do, as followers of Jesus, we still have afflictions. We still go through hard times. We have, some of us have misery, grief that we haven't dealt with, depression, anxiety, and, you know, loneliness, We deal with this stuff, and we need help. And that's the beauty about this verse, if you heard it. we 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 need support groups. We need compassionate listeners, people that will shut up. You know, that's the greatest gift in the body of Christ sometimes. If you just give somebody really your ear to listen to them, really listen. 
Because what will happen if you really listen to them? The Holy Spirit will speak to you. And then you'll have something to say. So I'm excited about this Compass launch that we're doing. But I want to tell you right now, this is not a, this is not a, this is not a three people type of deal. This is, a, this is a family, family message. Where we all need to see ourselves on the side of giving and receiving. Receiving and giving. Verse 4, let's look at it again. Who comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So those of you that have experienced comfort know how, how much it means how much other people's compassion because sometimes I can't see Jesus. I can't hear God, but I can hear him through you. I can hear him through you. Sometimes you you just listen to me enough that I can actually process some walls that need to be taken down in my life. I've experienced some things and I'm thankful that God hasn't wasted any of my hurts, my habits, my hangups. I've experienced death, grief, immense grief. That same mama that kept me from taking my own life. She, my dad, my aunt, two family dogs, passed away years ago in a tragic car accident just like that. And I felt like oh, my dad and I were just getting along. That God was doing something in that. And bam, out of nowhere. Grief. Compass is about addressing these issues. How do you grieve? I know some of you. You've lost people you love back in your country, and now you're here. And nobody's asking. Nobody's asking about your mom, your brother, your child. So we want support. We want, we want as a community to pull together and see God work as we lift up his word and encourage one another. So fostering an atmosphere where we can help and support each other through addictions, anxiety, anger, and resources that will help our marriages. Marriages, yeah. We all need help. I don't care if your marriage is good. When you think about marriage, it's like, oh yeah, I could be better. <laughs> right? Single life. So if you're not perfect, you got things going on, you are in the right place with a God who loves you. Let me give you three real fast points. Uh, I want to just give you three encouraging thoughts, and then I'm going to have a good friend and counselor on staff, Amy Kellogg, co-director, come up and share with us. But here's three real quick thoughts with some scriptures. First of all, you are not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Lo you know, loneliness is the enemy to recover, recovery. If you want to stick by yourself and not get out and get help, then that will keep you from getting your healing. God's people have suffered mentally, emotionally, and physically since the fall. Psalm 34, 12 says, and he is the Lord that is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves the crushed in spirit. When we suffer, we are not alone. And what's more, you know what, mental illness, I just explained that I went through depression, and you know what, I go through depression at stages. And I'm not ashamed of it. Because I want everybody to know, and I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the supernatural. I've seen miracles. I, I've seen God work in ways that I cannot even explain. But God works in a lot of different ways. And he works through people. He works through programs. He works through medication. But it's not about the medication. It's about the dedication. Do you get that? 
Because God is bigger than all of these things that we have to offer. It's, it's, all of these things are just pointing to the God of all mercy, of all comfort. Mental illness, according to the World Health Organization, says one in four people worldwide experience mental health issues. So we need to expose this. We need to not come across like we've got it together. Because the person on your left, that's right, person on your left and right (laughs) is dealing with something. And when we start talking about it, we start the healing process. Two, God is with you. We have a personal Savior who experiences emotions. I love the story. It's the shortest verse in the scripture. What is it? How do we all know that? It's sort of embarrassing, isn't it? You know, it's like, hey, what scriptures do you have? Remember? The shortest. <laughs> Jesus wept. But if you slow down and you think about that, Jesus wept. Our God is a God of feeling. Our God is a God that gets down in the pit with you. Our God is a God that is with you in that midnight hour when you're crying and you're lonely and you're shattered by a broken relationship. Our God is with you. He is an emotional God. He wept in the story of Lazarus. He knew he was going to raise him from the dead. But our God is one that gets in the hole. And if he cares enough to do that, then we need to care enough about each other to do that. Because sometimes I don't need a pat answer. Sometimes I don't need you to thump me with the Bible. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I just need you to get down in the pit and get dirty with me. Say, I'm here, I'm listening, and I'm praying for you. Third, God's word speaks. He speaks to us. The Bible isn't afraid to talk about mental and emotional anguish. We can look at Job. We can look at Psalms. I mean, it's all in there. It's raw. It's real. Just we don't have the highlight, the superhero stories. We got it all. Uh, You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Turn, uh, Psalm 25, 16 says, turn to me and be gracious to me. For I'm lonely. I'm afflicted. Going through it. Psalm 42, 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil with me? Within me. Hope in God. Hope in God. I hope you hear that by the Holy Spirit today. If you're in here downtrodden, cast down with burdens so heavy you don't know what to do. I hope you hear by the Spirit. Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation. The cool thing about Psalms is some of them get really gritty, you know, but at the end of most of them, you see redemption. It's like a Hallmark movie, (laughs) you know? It gets messy, but it has a good ending. Hey, for us as followers of Jesus, it does have a good ending. But if you're in the pit today, if you're going through some things today, I want you to know this. Just as I go back to my, my school that I grew up in, my small town, there was a trophy closet uh, with, with trophies in it. And, you know, and you walk in and just, you're reminded of, you know, how, how we won this and we won that. None, none of them belong to me, but, you know, but I'm reminded of how good, you know, our basketball team was and stuff. But, you know, when you're going through it, you need to build a trophy closet in your head of God's faithfulness, of times in the past where he's brought you through something, where he's taken you through some pain, through some grief, and that will help you, that will anchor you. So I don't care if it's, I, you know, let's pray for God to show up and break bondages and do miracles. I believe, let's do that. But let's also believe in people good counseling and medication, all of that God uses. But remember this, 
you're hurting and you're avoiding help and you're avoiding healing, then you'll stay there and it will affect you. And not just you, but those that come after you, those that are around you. So today, I just want you to really think about being a part of Compass, this compassion ministry here. And I also want to say some of you are involved in five ministries. I'm not talking to you. Do not get burned out in good things. But there are a whole lot of us that even now, as we've been sharing, God has been doing this. Answer to that. I bring up my good friend, Amy Kellogg, counselor on staff, co-director of Compass, and she will tell us more about how to get involved. Thanks, Amy. I get excited. I already know what Tim's going to say, but I still get excited every time I hear this because this has been something that actually we have been thinking about, praying about, working behind the scenes even this past year. And maybe for some of you, you've not heard of Compass before today, and that's, that's fine. But we want you to know that this has actually been going on for a long time, and not just since, since we've been doing it, but even years before that. And as, as Tim mentioned, it's even part of the fellowship DNA. And I don't know about you, but I love being a part of a church that says it's okay to not be okay. Part of a church that says this is important. We need to be there, the one another's for, for people. And, 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 and we need to come alongside those who are hurting. I don't want to be anywhere else. And as we, as we get ready to sort of set this off in 2020, um, there, there's so much excitement. I'm, I'm a little scared. God, what, what are you going to do through this? How are we going to help people? And yet I, we believe, we really believe that God is going to do something, not just in this room amongst us, but out there in the city of Dubai. Because I'll tell you what, I don't know anywhere else in the UAE, I don't know anywhere else in Dubai that's, that's doing something like this that doesn't cost an arm and a leg or whatever it might be, Right? that's doing something like this. This is big, guys, and we need your prayers. And we're excited to tell you about this. And I just want to reiterate the two, two of the things that Tim said. The first is, there is hope. And if you are here today, and you, as Tim was saying, if this is something that, that you are just really, it's heavy on you, I want you to know that there is hope. And the hope is not in this program that I'm going to tell you about these things. I'm going to tell you about the hope is in Jesus, right? Hope is in Jesus. We, we're just people. We're just broken vessels. And, and we're just, we're giving as God has given to us to give back to him. So the hope is in, is in, is in Christ. And we want to tell you about that. Everything that we have developed for this next year as part of this ministry is with that idea in mind. Right? That there, there is hope and that hope is Jesus. And the second thing, if you don't, Get anything else. Just walk out of here knowing you are not alone. You are not alone. When I uh, did some research on some of this, I, I looked up even on the Dubai statistics, you know, the UAE. Um, I found some things that were even startling to me. And I know there are hurts out there. As a counselor, I see those. I hear a lot of those. But I was even, uh, uh, my heart broke. I was looking at um, statistics for, for um, marriages and divorce. And, you know, I found out that, that in divorce rates, how they rated in, in Dubai, when I compared it to my home country in the U.S., it was twice the amount. Does that surprise any of you? Part of me is, is heartbroken and surprised by that. Part of me is going, yeah, no wonder. We've all moved across the, the world and all the stresses of life and all of these things that are going on. We don't often, we're not prepared to handle it. We don't have family and friends to turn to. We don't know what to do. And things start to unravel. The mental health statistics are pretty much like anywhere else in the world. We're not immune from this. And this is everybody. We're not alone. In the church, we're not alone. But the difference is we have a God who gives us hope, and we have one another. And everything about this ministry is to help us pull that together. I want you to look at this picture, too. And I want you to be reminded, this picture 
is actually a real picture, it's not a stock photo or something, of, of, of a group of our leaders that get together and, and every week, and we've been planning some things. And I want you to look, it's across all cultures, it's across all uh, ages, we've got people from everywhere, and we, it, this was after one of our meetings where even we were moved by the way that God is working in our lives, even as we want to serve others. We put our hands in at the, at the end of the meeting just in hope and prayer that this might become something that changes all of us, right? So you may come from a culture that that says, no, 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 we don't talk about this stuff. Man, you are not alone. Don't be alone in this. Come along with us. We all deal with this. Compass Ministry, as Tim said, is a compassionate care ministry. Um, this year, we're launching four different ways. Right now, here and now, I'm going to tell you exactly how to get involved. This isn't the end of it. We hope to add to this list so that it doesn't fit on a screen. But for today, here and now, as we launch this, we have four ways that you can become involved, either by receiving care or by helping. And the first one is called one-to-one. We're just calling it that. It's not professional counseling necessarily, although we do have people that are trained counselors that we may that we may um, connect you with but but it's just people just like Tim was saying who have been broken who maybe have gone through some things and who are who want to step out and walk beside us through some difficult times because like it said sometimes we just need someone to get in the pit with us don't we we just need to know that somebody's there and they can walk beside us they can listen and they can help us get through it and point us in the right directions And if you go to our website, actually, if you go here on the next one, you'll see uh, everything I'm about to tell you is going to be there. If you click on this little, looks like a a wheel or something, a compass, right? And and if you click on that, you're going to find that. In fact, if you go to the next one, the one-to-one looks like this. And we make it really simple, guys. You don't have to. You, you can even look on your phone now. I won't, I won't judge you if you have your phone in church, right? But if you, if you find this and you need to click on this contact us now, all it does is it just gives you a short, a short uh, form that you just let us know. It's like raising your hand, except not in front of 500 people, right? And, and it, it just raises your hand and, and says, hey, can you reach out to me? And what happens is we, we get in touch with you. It's very confidential, guys. It's not, the staff don't see it. It's not, it's a very small group of our group, right? It's just a couple people that maybe within are, are, are understanding it. And, and actually, it's a, we don't give that information out, but what we do is we connect you with another person that can walk beside you in this. And, and all you have to do is just take that step, okay? And it sets it into motion. Because sometimes that's the hardest part, isn't it? It's just taking that step. So if that's you, we want to invite you to do that. The second one is Celebrate Recovery, and um, we're really excited about this. Um, you'll, you'll actually uh, be hearing more about it because we're launching it next week, and there's a table outside, and I want, you to, I want you to go there. But Tim used these three words, right, over and over, and we're going to keep using those, hurts, habits, and hang-ups. You like that? That's, that pretty much covers all of us, right? We can all find ourselves in, somewhere in that. And so it's, it's similar to a 12-step program. If some of you guys have been through some, some other um, 12-step groups or support groups for addictions and various things, it's similar to that. But, guys, it's also so much different than that because it's, our higher power isn't just some sort of, you know, vague up in the sky. I think there's something there. We know our higher power. We know who Jesus is. And it's centered around that, and it's just this beautiful way. We want to actually break down the stigma. It's not like, oh, those people who are recovering, right? Oh, those people who are, they got it really bad, right? We actually want to say, man, all are welcome because we're all going through this stuff. And we have different groups within it. We have a a large celebration. And then we sort of break off, and we're able to share and just say, hey, you know what, Amy? I'm I'm Amy, and, and, and I'm struggling. This is what I'm going through. And you know what? People don't try to fix you. They just come alongside you, and they come and, and walk beside you. And it's, it's an incredible. It has moved the leaders as we ourselves have begun to go through it. And I want to invite you, as you listen to this, this may be you, but it also may be somebody you work with. It may be someone in your family. It may be somebody that you live near who's going through this. 
this stuff and they get stuck. And I want to invite you next Friday. We are launching it. And it will be every Friday after that, Lord willing, until until he comes back, right? We want, this is the first group like this that I believe that, that has been started in the UAE. There are other groups, don't get me wrong, there are support groups out there, but this is the first one like this. The focus is on, on healing through our hope in Jesus. And I want to encourage you guys, even if you're not sure, there's a table out there that talks about all the different kinds of, of smaller groups that meet. There's mental health. There's recovering from anger. There's things from our past, like childhood history or abuse. There's codependency. There's alcohol and substance abuse. There's sexual addictions. There's anything. But guys, don't let that stigma stop you. Oh, if I approach the table, maybe somebody will think something. Man, we are all in this. Guys, and we want to break this stuff down because isolation is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to cripple us. And so I encourage you, go check it out. Take one of these cards um, that, that's at the table or you might get one on the way out. Give it to somebody. Even if you're not sure, just show up. And just come and see. Check it out. You can come any week. And I want to encourage you to come and bring somebody. The next one is Prepare and Rich. Some of you guys maybe have heard of this as well. It's a, all of these programs are run all over the world. And yet, this is, I think, the first time that we're, we're really starting to see this take traction in, in the UAE. And we want to offer this. This is a tool that's been researched and used all over for, for couples, for relationships. If you've been married for 50 years, it's for you. If you've been married for uh, two years, it's for you. If you're not married yet, but you're trying to figure out, you know, can I get married? And is this okay? And, um, and, and all the rest, this is for you. If you're fighting, this is for you. If you're absolutely fine, this is, you get it? You get it? This is, with statistics like I shared with you, we're, marriages are under attack. You get that? And we have some opportunities, even right now, just two seasons next week, we start a group class. And you do the individual assessment, and, and you also get to collectively talk with some other couples. But then you, you actually go through it yourselves. And there's all sorts of um, kind of uh, things that help dialogue with you and your partner. And, and, and it's, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to strengthen your marriage or help in your relationship in some way. Guys, don't wait until it's too late, right? Don't wait until that edge. Let's do some work on this now, right? So I invite you, if that's you, or maybe nudge your partner right now, you know, your husband or wife, and you say, hey, maybe we should come, yeah? It's next, uh, next Friday. Sign up on the website. Find out more about it. And the last one is grief share. And as Tim shared this, uh, even his own story of grief, um, Man, you know what he's talking about if you've been through that. that. That feeling can come back in an instant. And for many of you, whether your grief has been maybe, you know, just recent or whether it's been 10 years ago and you still are wrestling and struggling, you haven't mourned, you haven't worked through it, you don't know how, please come. Next week, we start a class. I, I'm telling you, we're, we're putting it there. To, for you to, we're not giving you time to change your mind. Step into that place. You will find support. You will find that you will be in a room where people get it. It's 13 weeks. You don't have to even commit to all 13 weeks. You can come in and out if you're traveling or whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyone that you come to, I guarantee it will help you. It will support you. Everyone that I have spoken to who has done Grief Share has said how transformational it has been. So come and check it out. Let somebody know who's hurting, right? And lastly, I want to I invite you to take action. I've been inviting you. I've been calling you. But I want to I I um, communicate to you that, that whether you're here because you're hurting and you need to respond to one of these, or whether actually you go, mm, yeah, like, like I, I know what she's talking about. I've been there, and I've been through some stuff, and I actually think I could maybe walk alongside somebody else. We want to invite you to come be a part, because I'll tell you what, 
we need a lot of help, and we need a lot of people to be involved in this. And this isn't about having some, some great CV or all these skills, although some of you do. This is about, hey, I can do some stuff on tech, or I can play worship at one of the meetings, or I can, I can, you know, I can help out just by making phone calls or doing admin, or I can come alongside. I, I, can, I had one lady who's just like, I'm just really good at, like, listening. <laughs> Or, or maybe you're one of those people that, that, that you don't even mean to, you don't even go after, you know, talking to people about it, but they come to you. Some of you know who I mean, right? You're that person. You're going, I didn't even tell people I'm good at helping, or I don't even think I'm good at helping. But people always come to me for help. I think that's God saying something to you about maybe, maybe this is a way that he wants to use you. And maybe you're not even sure how you can be used or... Maybe you're not even sure you're through your own stuff. All we're saying to you is come and see. Check it out. Join us. Let us know you're here. Become involved. If you click on need help now, you're going to just fill out a quick form, raise your hand. We're going to get in touch with you. We're going to connect you to one of these areas that's going to help you most. And if you're one of those people who says, hey, I think I could serve in this way, click on that. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to fill it out. You're going to say, hey, here's where I think, you know, I'd like to be involved. We're going to call you up. We're going to let you know. In the meantime, too, you can try out any of these things, even just to see, hey, do I want to help with Celebrate Recovery? Do I want to help with Grief Share? Just show up. Just come and see. But we need, we need people to come alongside one another and help each other through this. I hope today that, that this, is, um, this has helped you to, to understand that, that we are here, it's okay, we're not alone, and that we have hope in Jesus. And I just want to close us in prayer as, as you um, reflect on this. I want to pray over us. I want to pray for those people, even right now, who are hurting. And then we'll have a closing song. Make sure you check out the table outside. Go visit the website. Make a response. You can talk to me on the side after the service. You can come for prayer over here. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much that you are a God who understands our struggles, our weakness, that you are someone who, um, who promises that in the pit you will be with us. And God, that it's okay when we're broken and we're not okay, that actually, Lord, you, you know that about us. And you long to heal us in those deepest places. And I pray for the healing that might occur, the incredible transformation that could incur, occur if we, if we begin to love and serve and support one another in the way that we long to. And I pray, God, that those who are here now who are hurting would respond. And those who are here now that say, I need to step into this, would respond. And God, we ask that you would take these loaves and fish and through your spirit do something that is way beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.